Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here, New Life Pentecostal Church, Albany, Georgia. You know, something I keep getting asked is, you know, Pastor Steve, could you compare the New King James with the MEV? Because they're both based ostensibly on the Texas Receptus. You know, the New King James claimed to be the fifth in the line of revisions of the King James NEV um, used the Textus Receptus. So there's a lot of people that they're like Textus Receptus only or Byzantine text only, but they're not necessarily King James only and all this. And they're like, well, could you just compare? So I thought I'd just take some of the major verses that people use a lot and just read them out of the New King James, which is the New King James Study Bible that made a couple years ago Thomas Nelson so graciously sent. It's probably one of our most watched videos, believe it or not. And the review on the New King James Study Bible, full color edition. And then the MEV. So in the MEV, we'll start with Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And in Genesis 1-1, in the New King James, it's in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So there's not a lot of difference there. Let's go to 126 and 27. And we'll start in the New King James. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. And us, our, and our, O-U-R, are all capitalized. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God he created him, male and female he created them. So let's see what it says in the MEV. And in the MEV, verses 26 and 27, it says, Then God said, Let us. Now, us is not capitalized in the MEV. Then God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. None of this is capitalized. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the livestock, and over all the earth. So notice the term livestock there and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So let's go to uh, 22 and is it 8, that great messianic prophecy. Genesis 22 and 8. And we'll read it out of the New King James. And it says, And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Now, the New King James kind of really eviscerates that oneness passage that God is going to provide himself a lamb. Let's see if the MEV does any better at all. Let's go to 22 and 8. It says, Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. So they kind of missed it there as well. Let's go to Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Let's go to Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Let's see how that reads in the New King James and then in the Modern English Version. The Modern English Version. And you can do this comparison yourself. I tell you, Apasio did an amazing job with this little thin line. It's very readable. You can tell I'm reading it here without like glasses or anything. Okay. 22.5 of Deuteronomy. A woman must not wear man's clothing, nor is a man to put on a woman's clothing. For all that do so are abominations to the Lord your God. Okay, so 22.5 here says, A woman shall not wear anything that pertains to a man, nor shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all who do so are an abomination to the Lord your God. So you can see, I mean, the meaning is probably close, um, if not exact, but there is quite a bit of differences there. Let's go to Isaiah 7.14. You know, this is a great messianic prophecy. Jesus being born of a virgin. Let's see what Isaiah 7, 14 says. And then we'll try to get into some New Testament scriptures as well. But a lot of people, they, you know, they've just been asking, 
for a comparison. I thought, well, I'll give a comparison here. I personally just stick with the King James. I love the King James. I think it is extraordinarily accurate. I've done many videos on that. You can go on the channel and see. All right, so 714 says this. Um, and it's kind of in uh, a paragraph form. So now I've got to find where 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And the is capitalized. The, not virgin, but the is. And then in a footnote it says Hebrew young woman. So let's see what it says in 714 here in the New King James. Therefore the Lord himself shall, will give you a sign. Behold the virgin, but thee is not capitalized, shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And I'm not sure if there is a, the Hebrew word rendered virgin means a young woman of marriageable age, but the word also connotes the idea of virginity. For the Septuagint, the Greek translation Hebrew Bible made in the 2nd century uh, B.C. translate the Hebrew word with Greek word that specifies, specifically means virgin. Okay, so um, let's go to Matthew 121. Matthew 121. We'll see some New Testament passages. See how they read in both the New King James and in the MEV. So Matthew 121 and the New King James says, And she will bring forth a son, and ye shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So let's see what it says in the MEV. I've got friends that really like the MEV. I've done some comparisons, and they're on the channel, of the MEV with the King James. And there's some places where it means totally different. And I would, act, I would say the MEV is weaker. Um, okay, so 121, she will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Let's go to John 3.16. That's always a very popular passage of Scripture, John 3.16. Boy, this new King James study Bible's got a lot of good study helps in it. John 3.16 and John 3.16. Try to get into a couple of doctrinal things here too. So John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Okay, uh, that's 318. It's in paragraph form, so it's kind of hard to find the verse sometimes. Okay, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life instead of eternal life. Some would say that's not a big deal. Okay, so Acts 238. Let's go to Acts 238, see what they read there. Acts 238. It says this, Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let's see what it says in uh, Acts 2.38 here in the New King James. New King James says, Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So you'll notice the let is in there. It kind of weakens the force of command in the New King James. But the New King James retains remission, whereas the MEV would translate Ephesus as forgiveness. So, I mean, that is a difference. That is something that is very different. Let's go to Psalm 23. We'll end with Psalm 23. A lot of times when they go to change Bibles and things, they try to leave some of the major ones the same. So let's see if they did that. Psalm 23. Psalm 23. Let's get there in this. Boy, they're coming out with imitation leathers that are absolutely unbelievable now. Such as in this MEV. Okay, a Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Let's see how this starts. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for name's sake. So it's very close. Very close to the King James. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Like the message there says, go through death valley. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I notice there too, like you and your, they miss, like in the King James, thy indicates singular. And monotheism is very much emphasized. Whereas in the MEV and the New King James, they would just say you, and it kind of blurs that. I've done videos on that distinction. Okay, let's read verse 6, Psalm 23. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Brother Mooney preached a good message on goodness and mercy following us. Okay, New King James. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Okay, so not a lot of difference there. This is just a brief look at some of the differences between the MEV and the New King James Version. It does seem like the Textus Receptus position or the Byzantine text position is becoming more popular to me. It does anyhow. And uh, the King James position is uh, doing real well too. So just a little brief look. I may do another one on this on the MEV versus the New King James Version. God bless. Talk with you later in Jesus' name.